no starting place for Conor Mortimer despite his fine display against Galway in the Connacht final when he came on as a sub. Donald Vaughan also came on in that game, but he starts today with Liam O'Malley dropping to the bench. Me left it as late as possible before confirming this team. The appeal against Stephen Bray's red card was unsuccessful. Michael Burke comes into the team in his place, although we're not sure if he'll actually uh, play in the half-forward line. Owen Harrington, now the captain, with Bray out through suspension, and that is the only change following their round four qualifier win over Limerick and Port Leash eight days ago. The umbrellas going up around Croke Park. The game underway. Croke Park, Meath coming into this as underdogs. 1951 was the last time that Mayo managed to beat Meath in the championship. Rare meetings between the two counties over the years. Donald Vaughan taking the line ball. Brian Meath had a touch on that. Here's Tatter Gardner, scored the winner in the Connacht final. Vaughan again made quite an impression when, when coming on in Pierce Stadium, now it's Aidan Kilcoin for Mayo, they will want and need a positive start, and Kilcoin has given them just that. After 38 seconds, Mayo draw first blood in the last quarter-final. Here comes Andy Moran. Again, a big gap between the half-back line and the Meads full-back line. Moran has got five points in the championship. He goes for number six, and he's got it. And Mayo, in the past, have struggled in Croke Park, but they've made the perfect start here. Three points to no score. That's a huge one, and McGarrity just palmed it down for Pat Hart. Mayo giving Meath no let-up at all. Brilliant take from Aidan O'Shea. He's got help from Aidan Kilcoyne. How did he miss that? Just seemed to be falling back as he hit it. Nigel Crawford has some space on McGarity for once. Brian Mead towards David Bray. Keith Higgins in tow. Bray just spilled it. Higgins will take the credit for putting him under pressure, but they haven't had a lot of breathing space in there. And is that a 45? It is. Obviously, the, the umpire waved it right, but the referee gave it 45, and Keen Ward should be able to kick this over the back. There's plenty of air on that, and he's put that over. So Meade off the mark in the 17th minute. The wind was helping him, but that cleared by quite a distance. It was very high. Great look at it there. Supporters have woken up. Will the team follow suit? A little push on Pat Hart there. Cleveland Kick did enough just to help him out of the way. Seamus Kenny. Pat O'Byrne, who works extremely hard in the bounce, he got the better of Andy Moore. Pat O'Byrne, Brian Mead calling for it. Mead put in behind. There could be a goal chance in here. It's into David Bray, and Bray takes the point. Two in a minute, it took them 17 to score. Here's Cormac McGuinness of Mead. We've got a bit of a game in our hands now. Brian Mead, Seamus Kenny. Trevor Howley will just sit there and hold that set of half back position. He should have been marking Joe Sheridan, though, he's drifting. David Bray for Mead. Goal chance, buried it. Now we've a game on our hands. They need goals today, they have got one. The brother isn't here, but David Bray representing the family and his county very well. Yeah, super ball in. Keith Higgins was looking for help there. No one came and helped him, and David Bray just took his time. Took it right in the back corner. He was on his own inside, making runs left and right for about two minutes before that, and all he was looking for is the ball over the top. Or Joe Shirley gave him a super pass in, lost his man in the wet conditions, took his time and hit this ball. After their blistering start, it's five minutes since Mayo last scored. They might get one here, though. Aidan Kilcoyne being held up by the experience of Anthony Moyles and using all of the experience that he's gained over ten years in his career to get possession back and win the free, too. Oh, dear, oh, dear. All went to his head. Here's Trevor Mortimer, the Mayo captain putting them ahead again, and that is a good response from Mayo. Meade have really put it up to them, 
in the last seven or eight minutes as they've finally started to play. A sticky patch for Mayo and Trevor Mortimer puts them back in front. Sheridan is in here. Howley came back out of Howley slips. Joe Sheridan! Point for me. But he wanted the goal and it was just rising as he struck it, leaning back fractionally. Level for the second time. He drove forward, head down, punted forward, and the ball could have gone in the, in the goal row of the bar, I think, but for sure it's going to go between the poles. Look at Donald Vaughan going up there with David Heaney. Vaughan is still there. Heaney goes himself. The block from Moyles was super, but Mayo recycled again. Alan Dillon. Dillon has got. Oh! Now, O'Rourke didn't take that over the line, according to the umpires. They had a look. We're going to have another look, but no goal has been given. Here we go, Barry. Six foot six is a great advantage. He catches the ball above. I, oh, it's hard to say there. Hard to say you'd want a goal. You'd want a camera on the line to actually definitively say. Which yeah. Way. This working out to be a very tricky assignment for Mayo. Brian Farrell. He's got the distance on that occasion, and Meath go in front. They lead for the first time, 1-5 to 7. Alan Dillon. This looks promising for Mayo, it is, it's into Mortimer! Well, they'll take the point, but you can bet your bottom dollar, the minute he turned, he was thinking goal. Yes, and I can't believe they had him as a sub from the start because he, he is a very dangerous forward. Totally optimistic goal side of his man, hoping his man wouldn't get the ball. Meath half back line come up with the ball again. David Bray, he was unfortunate. Ronan McGarrity. Lets it off to Pater Gardner. Gardner ran into Crawford, but it's worked out okay for Mayo and Keith Higgins again launching the attack Higgins going for the point himself the dual star they say he's not quite back to his best Do you know what he looks pretty good to us Mark Ronaldson Connor Mortimer Owen Harrington the lead captain just in front of him Trevor Mortimer offers some movement Connor still going hits the deck Trevor Mortimer O'Rourke in there goal Paddy O'Rourke, the six foot six goalkeeper, was slow to come out and he's been hurt. But the goal stands and it's for Aidan O'Shea. What was one is now four. Yes, you can see Conor Mortimer drew three players onto him. A diagonal ball into the full forward, and when you're six foot five, very hard to stop. Finished it really well, never tried to catch it, took it first time. The line ball from Sheridan taken quickly. David Bray looking for another goal. Penalty has been given. His shot off his weaker right foot came off the woodwork. But the penalty has been given. And King Ward is going to stand up for this. What exactly is going to happen to Liam O'Malley, who gave away the penalty? Yeah, but the holy this sideline kick should have gone for Mayo, not for me down here in front of us. The ball went over the line. We got a yellow card, but yellow for O'Malley. It should have been a meat sideline kick. Excuse me, a Mayo side down kick. Yeah, but it went for Meath. This was the build up to it. He had to take it on his right foot. Drop kicked it as well. Very soft penalty, Darren. Very soft penalty. What a moment this is in the All Ireland quarter final. Kenneth O'Malley crouches on the line. Keen War. Brilliant. Absolutely superb for Keane Ward. You got no indication at all from his run-up as to what side he was going to put it. O'Malley a couple of yards out off his line by the time contact was made with the ball, but neither back in business again. Technically tough, but everything he did struck the ball really well. Me's pumping that in there, looking. And finding Joe Sheridan.
eight times the sides have been level. O'Malley can't clear. Here's Keane Ward. He's got help from Jamie Queenie. Queenie steadies down and he's nailed that. And me go in front. They will just not go away and they never know when they're beaten. That old steel and the hunger that was a feature of so many teams in the past is back big time. Owen Harrington. Here's Cormac McGuinness. They came in today without their ace and scorer in chief, Stephen Gray. Nigel Crawford for Mead. Steadies down. He had David Gray in there free. And they're starting to pull away, or are they? They've got a two point lead, and we've less than five minutes to go. And this is going to put Mayo to the pin of their collar. They could finish them off now. Brian Farrell for me. Farrell! What a save for O'Malley. It's a point in the end, but it looked all ends up as if it was going to be three for Brian Farrell. It's a three point lead now for me. A fantastic save. Ball goes over the bar, but yet again, Joe Sheridan gets the ball, drop kicks the ball about 70 metres right into the full forward line to set up the score. Just two minutes of normal time remaining. Mead attacking again. They are full of confidence at this stage, and this man has been confident all the way through. David Bray skipping away from Higgins, and Bray going with the fist to put them four up. He's got the point. They're two scores ahead with less than two minutes remaining. That's not a clever ball. Jamie Queenie, he's got to score from here, Queenie, and I think he's done it. Yes, he has. That is a brilliant score from a guy you won't have heard that much about on the Meath junior team at the start of the year. Came in, scored a goal during the qualifiers, and he's now got two great points, and it's Meath by five. A fantastic score again. That is just an incredible kick of the ball. But again, it's bad decision-making by Mayo. About 40 seconds remaining, 45 seconds. Mayo need two scores, a goal and a point. Here's Trevor Howley. Pat Hart. Howley again. Didn't quite know what to do there. Mark Ronaldson. A gold wall set up right in front of the Mees post, but Mortimer has put that over. They need possession. How much time will they be allowed to play on? A goal between them. But one score. 72-53. Well, three minutes was what we were told Joe McQuillan would play. And is he running towards Paddy O'Rourke to take the ball? It's all over. And Meath are into the All-Ireland semi-final for the first time in two years. It looked highly unlikely after their defeat against Dublin. And Dublin kicked all those wides. That was back on the 7th of June. But Meath have come to Croke Park and like Kerry last week, they have ambushed Mayo, who were heavy favourites coming in here. Me, the big Mayo, by 2.15 to 1.15. We've got a good start, uh, and we built up a four-point lead in the second half again, so I suppose, but a full credit to me, they, they, they responded each time, and I think each time when they did respond, we just didn't come at them again as much as we should have but I mean that's it fair play to them we, you know the, the, the better team won on the day and a lot of our guys learned a lot of stuff out there but it's it's disappointing but uh, you know we have no excuses we, we there's a, you know we played some good football in the periods when we were in charge did quite well but you know not enough for long enough I suppose Mayo were favourites going into the game given that they'd won the Connacht Championship and they're probably a bit more experienced at this level than us but uh, with four tough games under our belts in the qualifiers, uh, particularly the last game against Limerick with a really tough game and um, we battled hard to come through that game, especially at the end when we were down to 14 men. So I suppose on the back of that result, we knew we were in with a chance today. Well, Kevin McStay is a Mayo man. You know about Keith Duggan's book about Mayo football called The House of Pain. More pain today, Mayo 